Hey, Skyler here from Change You Can Wear, and today we're going to be taking the silver quarter and make it using mainly just the Pepe Tools ring stretcher. Now the first thing we need to do is cut a hole. You could definitely drill a hole out if you wanted to, but for me I'm going to use probably one of the more expensive ways, which is this Jason's Works Auto Punch. It's the best tool out there. It auto centers the coin as you put it in. It has all these different dies that have you know different sizes and whatnot. For here we're going to be using a half inch punch and that's what I use for all my quarters. Once we have the hole cut, we're going to go ahead and take it back off the punch, just knocking it back off of there. And now what we need to do is clean up that cut edge. So generally, I would use this deburring tool, but in order to use less tools, we're gonna to skip that and just use 120 grit sandpaper. This is really all you need anyway to get rid of that. We're just rounding that edge off so that way it doesn't split when we start to fold it. And the next step would generally be annealing it to soften the metal. But with a quarter, you can probably avoid just skipping this step altogether. That would definitely save some tools if you're going to a show or something, dragging that with you. And now this is a coin ring specific die. It's an upgrade Pepe Tools has, which is amazing. It's got 25 degrees on one side and 17 on another. But what we can do is instead of doing that, just use the die that it comes with originally, which is just a regular ring die and it's 17 degree only, it's a lot smaller holes. But for quarters, this is all we're gonna need. So we're gonna find the die that it barely fits into, which is gonna be this one. We'll put it under our plunger, and then use our Jason's Work starting cone. This is going to get the hole started, and we don't wanna use it all the way to the bottom because it'll mar the coin up, so we're going to switch it to a composite cone. And we'll press this one all the way down. All right, now that we have our cone shape achieved, we're going to go and take some 120 grit sandpaper again and just clean up that cut edge again. And this step is designed to avoid this thing splitting when we go to stretch it here next. Now we'll take it back to the Pepe Tools ring stretcher and use the stretching portion of this. We're gonna put it coin edge facing up as we stretch and we're gonna stretch it out all the way until the coin edge is touching that mandrel everywhere. And this step is going to avoid having a wonky or tilted coin ring. And so we're gonna take the Pepe Tools ring mandrel now and check our size. We're sitting at right about a nine and a half. And now we're going to go back to the dies on the bottom and shrink this thing down about a half size below our target size. That's gonna get rid of that cone shape. And once we've done that, we're going to turn it around and get some Pepe lube on that cut side and put it back in our ring die. And this step, we're just trying to make the coin ring look even on the outside. So it's nothing to do with size, it's more just looks on the outside of the band. Once we've done that, we're gonna take some 120 grit sandpaper again and sand that sharp coin edge that's in there out. And now, if you have a deep burning tool, this would be a good time to use it, but really it just takes a little bit more elbow grease and 120 grit sandpaper works fine. And now what I have here is a jewelry cloth and we're just polishing this thing up by hand. And our coin ring's finished. Now, the antiquing process we skipped here because I was trying to avoid bringing extra things, say you were taking them to a show or something and you wanted to make these at a Saturday market, that's just extra stuff, but if you wanted to, you definitely get a much nicer contrast. What do you guys think?